we're going to start this episode out talking about Beyonce. Now, last week was your birthday, so we let her slide. I complimented her. Now, if Beyonce hadn't done nothing, I wouldn't be saying nothing, like Kenya. Kenya was the only one talking about Porsche's, you know, husbandom. Even Fallon didn't have that much to say, and it was her husband, but Kenya, yip, 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 yap. Beyonce has come out with a rodeo-inspired line for Ivy Park. Yep. And just the initial picture, I mean, I guess you can take the tacky out the, you can take the girl from the tacky, but you can't take the tacky from the girl. She said, I have to go back to that ridiculous <laughs> cowboy hat. <laughs> Remember um, the bugaboo outfits? She's like, no, we've got to go back to that. We've got to go back to making neckerchief shirts. Okay. I mean, it's, it's your life, you can do what you want, but it's hideous. I mean, this outfit she's got on in the commercial is something Gabrice and Gabrissi would wear. I was letting you get it out. I was letting you get it out. <laughs> oh God, that belt buckle. Oh Lord, I'm scrolling through. Okay, also why is everything a platform sneaker now? Can we let that trend end? I mean, it's for short people, you know, like. Actually, if there's anything I don't know, it's that. <laughs> we don't know anything about short people. We don't know that struggle. I feel sorry for short men because they're always overlooked. Well, I knew you was gonna talk about Beyonce. I saw the, your Adidas suit on right now. And I was like, yeah, he's gonna talk about her line. Um, I will say it's, it's very, um, adventurous but some people are excited about it i i was like are we going back to darion with this because i was like ooh, I don't, I don't know about this but there's some pieces that are not cowboy inspired that are nice like there's a like a um a lavender adidas track suit it looks nice i might give that a try but uh um... she has some pieces that look pretty good but you know the uh what do you call it? The um, chaps. Chaps. Oh my goodness. The chaps. The chaps. You know, um, it's, the, it's not for me, but I think. Oh. <laughs> oh no. I was going to say, this is the only chap I mess with. <laughs> Chapstick. <laughs> look, I just think that people going to look crazy trying to look like Beyonce. Like, Beyonce looks great in anything. Rihanna looks great in anything. I knew you was about to say, I knew you was about to say, you know what? Rihanna looks great in everything. Beyonce looks great in almost everything. I was gonna say, remember when she cut them bang? Yes, so <laughs> never mind, I, I retract. But, you know, I feel like there's still gonna be people that's gonna be like buying it, but I just hope some people realize that you aren't able to look like Beyonce wearing this, like to the club. Like I could just see somebody, you know, <laughs> look like they about to perform daddy lessons, like going to the club. Oh my God. I mean, I saw that hat and I just heard, you make me want to break my lease so I can move cause you a bugaboo, a bugaboo. And I mean, I guess that that's her throwback. You know, that's her hit. We will still shimmy the bugaboo, but ooh, those outfits. Can we talk about the unit? The <laughs> like unit? Beyonce's hair, like the curly wig, it is like, it's insane. I mean, Beyonce has always worn two wigs and pretended it was one, but she can do that because it's got to blow in the wind. She can do that. That's her. I will give her that as her trademark. Like that was a voluminous curly wig that she had on. <laughs> like I was like, wow. She can give you all the hair. She can give you that. She can give you all the dance moves, but um, she can't give you taste or style or original intellectual property. Um, again, y'all, anything Alexander Rogers says is what Alexander Rogers says. Uh, Chris Diggins does not feel that way. His opinions are his opinions. 
But Beyonce will give you a a worthwhile performance. Mm -hmm. She'll give you a great album. We waiting on that next great album. We waiting. I'm sitting here like, let's go. I, I think she has style. Sirens. I thought we got away from that. Well, here's something that we can agree on. In Scammer News, Kim Zolciak launches a spiritual academy to help others manifest their dreams for $77 a month. Yes, I saw that little scam on her Instagram story. So $77 a month. She's like, oh, just only $77 a month. She's broke right now. She, she's hurting from that show being canceled. So now she needs another source of income. When I see that, the only phrase I can think of is a fool and their money are soon parted. But look at this, like $77, like a month, that's $924. All she needs is a thousand people to do this, like a thousand suckers. And that's like $924,000 a year. And the way she's got the donations set up, it's going to be tax free for her. So you're manifesting dreams, all right, her dreams. I, where are the old school gold diggers that knew how to marry for money and keep it for the rest of their lives? The Leona Helmsleys of the world. Now she might've been evil, but she married well and did it right. The, this half a well, let's see, we've got that uh, Brielle's father, which we've never heard about. He's never even crawled out of the woodwork. Then we've got um, supposedly Lee Najir that she was with that was Big Papa, but she could never seal the deal. Then she married um, Kaka Kakroy, and he was supposed to have an NFL retirement. Hey, so stop, stop. Did you say Kaka Kakroy? I said Kaka Kakroy. Like Kaka like She's back. <laughs> and yeah, that, 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 joke. that was a good joke. C -c 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 <laughs> <laughs> I caught that. <laughs> oh my God. But he's supposed to be. That is his name now. Because <laughs> I know, like, I know when he got annoyed with. Um, Sweetie! Well, with Sweetie, but remember when they were at his baby shower and like Peter and Apollo was fighting? I know he wanted to say the N word so bad. He wanted to say it like these people. Like, I know you want to say those. <laughs> I just know it. But anyway. That reminds me of an old school Dave Chappelle skit. When is it appropriate for white people to say the N word? when it's how you really feel. I like my racism up and away from the face. <laughs> Some other news from Kim. So she was asked, would she ever go back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta? And she said that she would only go to like film a scene with either Portia or Sheree, like somebody that she gets along with. Other than that, that's the only like way she'll like film on there. The only pull Sheree has is with dental floss. That, that is the extent of her pull power. She cannot get Kim back on the show. And honestly, I don't want to see Sheree back. You failed twice, now move along. Let someone talented on. Let someone interesting on. Let someone who can actually read on. Let someone who can enunciate on. Because when she tries to read, she's supposed to get that marble mouth. I think Sheree provides a nostalgia and I think people just want to see her be delusional and like pull up, like be the bone collector. I think people miss that on the show because no one's doing that right right now. Like Cynthia, that was supposed to be her job, but she's not doing a, like a very well job at it. So Sheree, she's like, she's messy for a check, even though she doesn't have anything else going on with her. Maybe she has a plot line this time. I mean, we could see her fall for the felon phallus. We could see her try to return to, you know, her own cockeyed vomit with Bob Whitfield. 
we could see her pretend to release clothing. I mean, we saw her try to release a clothing line three times. I, I don't want to see her do it for a fourth. Just because it's familiar doesn't mean it isn't lousy. And Sheree Whitfield is simply lousy. She's lousy at life, lousy at financial planning, and lousy at keeping a man. Well, lousy at finding one to keep. Again, another one. She was a gold digger. She married her football player and she ended up with nothing. He just took the best years of her thighs and ran off. Mm. I hate to see it. Well, um, I, I think life is reading Sheree. I don't think you need to read her as much as you do. She's gonna have a plot line actually because she's applied for PPP loans and that's public information in Fulton County. So I can't wait to see um, what business you have because the government will be checking on you. That's why when all that stuff was going on, they said, oh, Alex, you can apply for a P. I said, mm -mm, mm -mm, I don't need it. I'm not doing it. Don't want those problems. And now we're seeing all the people caught up. And I can't wait till she gets caught up to the tune of $20,319.38. Well, speaking of not needing something, um... These festivals um, look like they don't need the baby. And yeah, so he's lost out on one, two, three, four, five, six. He's lost out on seven checks from seven different festivals. He's been dropped, dropped, dropped from the lineups, dropped. Not dropped, dropped, dropped like Sissy Smollett, who was dropped from Columbia Records unceremoniously. These are, well, actually, no, these are droppings on ceremony. Jesse was just dropped because he was talentless. The baby was dropped because he did something. Oh, did I say that out loud? <sighs> well, he's been dropped from Lollapalooza, Park Life, The Governor's Ball, Day in Vegas, which I am going to. Music Midtown in Atlanta, iHeartRadio, the daytime stage, and Austin City Limits. So these seven checks, that's at least $4 million. Like, at least $4 million. So, yeah. You this, see this my expression. Cool. Child, you know what? His channel got deleted. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's going to stay deleted. He will find work on the Chitlin circuit. But instead of Lollapalooza, Day in Vegas, like these are giant festivals that grow your brand. Like, wow. And we're just coming out of the vibe. Ooh, ooh he messed up. Mm. Right. That, I, I didn't even know he was that popular. Like I thought that, you know, I was like, okay, maybe rolling, like, okay, he got rolling loud, but I normally would expect to see him performing where it's maybe Trina's opening and he's the headliner at some chicken joint in Florida. But that's what I always saw. And I guess now that's what will be. Because Trina likes to say ignorant things about black people too. She likes to say ignorant things about gay people too. So you know what? Let those two peas be in their poverty pod together. So the baby is actually pretty popular. Like, <laughs> Um, because he was on all these festivals along with Megan. And I think where he messed up at was he knew that he could say stuff about like this this man, even before the gay thing, before he insulted the gays, he's like hit a woman like in the face, I think twice. And I think allegedly he killed someone, but it takes, you know, talking about the gays for him to finally be canceled. Why did he kill them? Because 50 Cent was shot nine times. And now that we know who he is, I'm like, you deserved at least five of those bullets. <laughs> at least five. Looking at a race thing, like as looking at it as a black person, like it wasn't a big deal when it came to like women or whatever, but like our own community. But you know, when it comes to the LGBTQ people where like white people are included, now like People are like, oh, you can't do this. I would say that Black people continue to support him. Right. That's why I just wish that, you know, collectively when Chris, Black people... Look at Chris Brown. Look I at mean, look Chris at R. Brown. Kelly. People still support R. Kelly. 
Tory Lanez, like people still in his corner. Like, I'm just like, when are we going to be outraged in our community enough to say like, this isn't okay. And we're canceling you. Right. I mean, look at Kanye. Sometimes he's just an asshole. True. True. But I'm enjoying this, this song. I love it that the baby's being canceled so much. And speaking of being canceled, when Meghan McCain finally left The View, ooh, child, Joy Behar said it all. Okay, bye. <laughs> I need to see the clip. Oh my God, it's like, should be on Love Me, Scott. Wow. Joy is ready to the oh end. Oh my God. <laughs> Joy could be Joy could be on her deathbed. If she don't fuck with you, she don't fuck with you. That's the energy that I like. Keep that same energy. Like I was watching the encore, and then when 702 was about to bop the twins, and then when they finally leave the house, they want to go in for a hug. No, no, we keeping the same energy. Don't hug me, trick. By the way, my encore review, I think that's the funniest video I've ever done. Keely made me so angry. I've read them so much. I didn't even realize it. But yes, back to, who were we talking about? Do they matter? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Here's the thing, they're clearly forgettable. Right, but, but who were you talking about? Megan McCain. Oh, like right. Said, oh. Forgettable. That fucking sow. <laughs> but yes, Joy Behar. I love it. I'm here for it. Shout out to that. Okay, bye. <laughs> Did you hear Lauren Hill like has a verse on Nas's new song? And she talks about um how great she is, but y'all worried about her lateness. This this was in her rap. And someone sent it to me. It was like, oops, she's talking about y'all. I was just like, I mean. Two things can be true at the same time. Laura can be an exceptional talent, an amazing female MC, but I'm gonna complain every time she's late because it's disrespectful and rude. I'm sorry. It is, if you've paid your hard earned money to show up and support her and her art, she's got to respect the audience and that's disrespecting your audience. I mean, I really enjoyed the verse though. It was good, but you know, I'm, I'm still gonna complain. And I'm, I'm not probably gonna go see her in concert because I know it's gonna start three hours late or not happen at all. You know, our, we might be a day late, but you know our show coming. <laughs> yes. And yes. it's like, it's the weekend. We have lives, we have things to do. We have out of towns to go. We've got people to meet, places to see, trying to get out into the world before the Delta variant ruins it again. Yeah, um, I'm reporting to you live from DC right now. Last week it was um, Palm, Springs. Palm Springs. I've been going out and living my life too. Oh, in good news, President Biden extends student loan payment pause until next year. And I'm gonna let that happen so that way they can use the reconciliation to eliminate student debt because we need at least 50,000 off. My problem is, just cancel it. Don't delay it. Just cancel it. Why does the government want so many of its people in debt? Because it's a way to control people. Hey, yeah. And why is education so expensive when the smarter people are, the better a society does? Right. And how come teachers aren't paid anything? <laughs> Ooh. Who wants to be a teacher making $30,000 a year, you know? That is crazy. A, a tough, well, they know that people love the art of teaching. And so they're just going to give of themselves to keep doing it. But yeah, they need to be making like $100,000 a year minimum dealing with these badass kids. I don't want to deal with nobody else's badass kids. I like being in San Francisco where there are more dogs than children because half, I'm sorry, a lot of children don't know how to behave and parents don't know how to correct them. A lot of these kids need to be in the motherfucking house. A lot of these kids need to be in the house. Speaking of kids, uh, one of Dr. Dre's estranged children, um, his 38 year old daughter 
says she is living in her car after not receiving money from him in 18 months. Now, the story is, do you know Shannon Sharp? Like he's um, like yes. an NFL commentator. I know Shannon Sharp. I know okay. Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp is a very attractive man. He is. He's like the definition of hot uncle. He got broad shoulders and a thick neck. <laughs> he said that a 38-year-old grown woman trying to shame her father into taking care of responsibilities she created. Now, what is your thing? Like, if you had children and you was a billionaire and maybe, like, wouldn't you feel some type of way if your child, no matter if she is 38 and you're older and you're a billionaire, you see her struggling with her kids and living in a car, you still wouldn't help her? She's got children? I think so. Uh, now, my grandbabies, they would be with me. It's it, This is really tough because I'm, I don't have enough information to solve this equation. Like, there are too many components missing. Like, is this something where it's like, okay, I've given you opportunity after opportunity. I've bought you homes. I've given you jobs. And you just keep messing it up where it's like, I got to let you learn how to be an adult on your own because one day I won't be here. And even if I do die, you'll blow through the money in six months and still be in a crappy position. And then I'm dead and I can't fix anything. But do knowing Dr. Dre, he could also be a worthless piece of shit. So I, I need to know more to judge because it could be she's got to learn how to do it on her own. She is 38. I'm 38. And it is hard to do it on your own, especially when, you know, you have giant companies trying to take you down, like your channel and your business of 12 years. Right when you've got to deal with pandemics and all of that. It's a lot. It's a lot to adult right now. It's hard. I will get that. But also you've got to figure it out. And a good parent sometimes has to say, baby bird, leave the nest. Like I knew when my channel got shut down, I was like, you can't call your parents for rent. Your rent is too much. You've got to figure this one out on your own. Sometimes that's life. I just feel like it's hard, like if I had the money, like you're almost a billionaire, like just put her in a house or something, you know, like just, I don't know, maybe it's something behind the scenes, but if you got the money, I mean, endless, endless amount of money, like what are you gonna do with over $800 million, you know? Like, you know, my children would have a trust fund and never have to work a day in their lives. Right. I would, I would want my children to be irritatingly rich, privileged black children. It's like, oh, honey, Ooh, you fly public? Commercial? Mm, I don't know that life. <laughs> but if they're not good with money, sometimes it can be a detriment to them. True, true. It's like, I'm not going to give you enough money to overdose. I'd rather not be at your funeral. Oh, we need to talk about this. In white people news, Ashton Kutcher, Mila Noose, and now Jake Gyllenhaal are talking about how they don't bathe that often. What? Yeah, yeah, Jake too. Definitely in white people news. Like, what is going on? Like, wash your body. They don't wash their leg. Now, that, well, you see, it's a slow, they're coming out. First, it was, it's like when gay men come out and they say to their family, okay, I'm bi. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't wash at all. <laughs> <laughs> they said, okay, well, we don't wash our legs. Well, well, now we don't wash at all. <laughs> I'm like, I, like, I feel like, I feel dirty if I haven't showered twice a day. Like, you need, to, you need the morning and you need the evening. You need to clean your body before you get in the bed. You need to clean your body when you get out of the bed. And you've already paid for the hot water. That's how I look at it. You know, we're all living indoors. God willing. Um, so I've already paid for the hot water. I might use it in the middle of the day. Look, there's homeless people that don't have the luxury of taking a shower every day and you're choosing to, to, to be dirty, to not like wash your ass. 
You know, I'm just realizing I saw an Architectural Digest video of their home and all the money they spent on that bathroom to not use it. <laughs> You've got $40,000 showers <laughs> and you won't wash your ass. <laughs> Speaking of which, this hotel, um, this shower, oh my goodness, like, it's, it's just so nice. Like, there's an actual seat in the shower. Ooh, I want one of those. I was like, I need to take advantage of this while I'm in DC. I need to look through my uh, Rolodex. I counted at least five positions I could have someone in in that shower. Was that too much? That must be a big ass shower because you're six seven. I was dating a guy that was six seven. He was the tallest guy I've ever dated. And he wanted to have sex in the shower. And I was just like, honey, all we gonna do is collapse. That's just gonna end in broken <laughs> <laughs> with, with With the seat, I could imagine. I've never been a shower sex person. I was just thinking about the seat. Like, mm, I could just sit there and have the warm water fall on me. Well. You see how we just went off the rails? We were talking about white people not bathing, white celebrities not bathing. <laughs> but yes, um, take a shower, please. <laughs> like people get so privileged, now they think they don't have to take showers now? I mean, that is a level of privilege because I'm sorry, your ass is stanking and nobody's telling you. The emperor has no clothes. In other news, we have some Salt Lake City news. The block is hot in Salt Lake City. Your girl, Mary, she is, um, she's in some hot water of her own, some legal trouble. It's not even about Jen. So Mary Cosby pleads not guilty to unlawfully providing shelter to a runaway. I have a problem with that. Now, I may dislike Mary, but mm -hmm. as long as she was not abusing that child, providing shelter is a problem. The kid clearly ran away for a reason. Maybe the parents were abusive. I just, I would like to know more about that, but I feel like providing shelter to a child in need should never be something that criminally prosecuted. They didn't say she kidnapped, so she ain't take nobody. Providing shelter to a runaway. Let's talk about being a shitty parent. Why did the kid run away? And also, if the kid ran away, and it's like, okay, kids run away, they have a moment, providing shelter, you're going to get prosecuted for making sure that the child is safe and not out there getting molested or, or anything worse. Really, that, that's who we are as a people? I, I, that, just, that statement, like it's, it doesn't compute, it short circuits my brain. Like, I understand, like, yeah, you've got to let the authorities know where the kid is and what the parents, like, let the parents know and all that. I get that. But the statement providing shelter, like, I see a 16-year-old out in the world and I just take you in and provide shelter mm -hmm. so that you're not out there getting murdered because we all know what's out there in the world. Yeah, I didn't know it was involving a kid, but it says specific details surrounding the alleged incident are unknown. However, there are reports circulating that Cosby's only son may have also been involved. She says she's saddened that she was dragged into another family's domestic situation, but is confident that this misunderstanding will be cleared up soon. You know what this makes me think of? You know, Little Fires Everywhere with Kerry Washington mm -hmm. and like how the kid and uh, Reese's kid was like um, trying to live with uh, Kerry Washington. With Kerry me. Washington mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, that's what they kind of remind me of that situation. You never know. To me, especially because she said it's family, it sounds like one of her cousins was having some issues at home, came to Aunt Mary's house, Aunt Mary opened the door as Aunt Mary should, and then it became an issue. Mm hmm. There isn't no nuance to Jen Shah's situation. Like she did that and she's facing 30 years in prison. Ooh, 30 years, just make it honest. <laughs> like that's one thing that surprises me about criminal masterminds is like, honey, if you just put this energy into legitimate business, you'd have more and you wouldn't have to worry. I agree. Guys, 
For the better part of their lives, our better halves have been fantasizing about the perfect wedding ring. Cut, clarity, carrot, color, you name it. For us, not so much. And jewelry stores clearly think the same thing. Who really cares about a guy's band, right? Well, Manly Bands does, and they're here to rescue you from an otherwise hellish band buying experience. Manly Bands offers your hand the freedom to look how you want it to in just about every type of earthy material imaginable, and even from space. So this is the band that I chose. It's called The Storyteller. I, I just really love the design. Um, as y'all know, I am not engaged, but fashionably, um, I do like a ring or two. So it was such an easy process. So to get started, you use the Manly Ring Sizer from Manly Bands to ensure that your ring will fit perfectly during work and play. So now that you know your size, this is the fun part. So Manly Bands has an insane selection of materials to choose from, gold, wood, antlers, steel, dinosaur bone, and even the meteorites that killed them. So when I was choosing my designs, it was just such an easy process of getting it. Like once I had my ring size, it came in so fast too. And this is the ring I chose and I'm putting on my middle finger and I love it, I really do. Uh, once you've selected your band, Manly Bands offers free shipping worldwide a 30 day exchange policy and a free warranty. So while there might be a 50% chance of your marriage working out, there's a 100% chance that you're gonna love your band. To order your Manly Band and get 21% off plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash ropes. That's manlybands.com slash ropes for 21% off. Manly Bands, the best damn rings, period. So you know we have a good story for y'all and who it's who it's um concerning because I have a lot to say. Oh, about who? It's about Nicki Minaj and Jesse J. I'm like, wow, wow. Like Jesse J was just compliments, like she was just happy to be here. And here come bully ass Nicki Minaj again. Now I said on Twitter, y'all, that I wasn't gonna say anything about it. I just said. All I have to say on the situation is Jesse J is a class act. That's all I was going to say until I get on Pop Rose. So what had happened was Jesse J was interviewed for Glamour Magazine about the behind the scenes of the song Bang Bang. It was okay, you know? It was a little bit of a, a cute pop bop. I didn't mind it. Ariana Grande, Nicki Minaj, Jesse J, cool. She's talking about like how the song, like, it already existed. She didn't write Bang Bang, Max Martin did. So she was talking about how her and um, Ariana Grande were like saying, why don't we both do it? And then she said she first recorded the verse and then Nikki played it in the studio and was like, I gotta jump on this. We didn't go to her and ask, she wanted to do it. I'll never forget. I was in my bedroom in my flat in London and I got sent the version with Nikki on it. I just sat at the end of my bed holding my phone, staring at the floor going, how the fuck did I land this? It's like I won a competition. Like she was happy about it. So Nicki Minaj later on, she retweets the article with Jesse J in and she's like, babe, at Jesse J. I didn't hear the song and asked to get on it. The label asked me to get on it and paid me. How would I have heard the song? Child, am I the damn song monitor snooping around for songs? This was said by another artist recently as well. Y'all gotta stop. Okay. Okay, like that was just so mean. Like, why did she have to do that? Because she's Nicki Minaj. I would say moments like that will keep her from collaborations in the future. Like I just got into it with a friend who's a bar, just like, oh yeah, it's the Nicki hate train. I'm like, she's the common denominator in a lot of things. Like she's not a nice person. This is from different artists, different people that work with her. Yes, she's talented. I can admit that, but the woman is an asshole. And so, I, can, I can be shader and say she's, you know, a child predator uh, sympathist, but no, I'm just saying that she's an asshole. And so is Kenya Moore. Like Gabrison Gabrissi and Rob Dixon, she's gotten, of course not man. A man in name only. Jesse J responded, and it's a good one. 
It is a good one. And Nikki, uh, the label asked you to get on the song, but you clearly heard the song. You clearly liked it. You clearly felt like, okay, this was good enough for your brand. It was good enough to do a music video for. So just because you may have forgotten or Jesse may have forgotten how it was actually presented to you, you still said, I'm gonna get on this. Right, she has a, a choice whether she wanted to be on the song or not. Like, it's just little semantics here and there. Why does she have to be like, oh, I was asked to be on this song. I didn't ask. Like, so what? It was a good song. Jesse J was just talking about how happy she was that you were on it. But anyway, Jesse J said, I respect you publicly for being yourself, Nicki Minaj. So here I am being myself. Basically, um, went on her Instagram and showed all the different memes that this uh that this caused. And she said, um, if we can't laugh in the lives we have been blessed with, what's the point? It really isn't that deep. From the moment I met you, now I've shown you nothing but love and gratitude for how fucking blessed I was to have you and Ari, who, by the way, wrote Bang Bang with the, with the insanely talented Max Martin, which I found out today. What a day. Sorry, Ari. I never knew. Wow. She said, I'm sorry I got it wrong this all these years. I was told you heard the song and wanted to be on it by someone clearly gassing me up by the label. What a way for us to celebrate this seven-year anniversary of the song. Should we go for dinner? No. Probably not, right? Too soon? Bang Bang Part 2? Do it like a dude remix? Okay, I'll stop. Look, the song did its damn thing. I will never say you asked to be on the song ever again. Although this drama means memes, and man, have the memes been good? It's kept me entertained all day. And then she, like, showed all the memes. Class act, right? <laughs> Utterly and completely. I mean, Nikki needs something to do. You've got a whole baby. Baby. Go tend to your cute baby. Your baby is adorable. Go tend to your cute baby and, and stop playing semantic gymnastics. If we're going to do gymnastics, let Simone Biles take care of that. She's, she's better than you, always has been, always will be. Oh, did she get that Grammy yet? Of course not. Have you heard how Erica Jane came for Garcelle? I have not. Oh my goodness, like, let me just speak on it right quick. So they were walking in the desert on a hike and it was just her, Crystal and Garcelle. And you know, Garcelle, she was asking all the right questions just for that scene alone. Just for that scene alone, she needs an increase. But because you know, the other girls, they're like, they're sheep for Erica, you know, like they're just like, oh, Erica, this, you know, like Garcelle was asking the pressing question. She was like, so did you get the heads up? Is that why you divorced them? And then she was like, no, I did not. <laughs> and she was walking away and Erica Jane forgot she was mic'd, I guess. And she said that she gets phone calls from Tom every day. She said she played the messages and it's like, oh, baby, I miss you. Come back. I'm sorry. So Garcelle repeated this in front of all the ladies when she got back to the house. But the thing was like, it was already picked up, but Erica didn't want her to say that, I guess. The way she went off on Garcelle, she was just like, well, I do mind you bringing this up, but go ahead, have your moment. And I think she, she cursed. She was like, uh, have your fucking moment, something around the lines of that. And she was like, Garcelle, I think what you did, that, that was dirty. And Garcelle was like, oh, come on, Erica, come on. Like, <laughs> Crystal said that Erica said that she didn't want to talk about it, but clearly Garcelle didn't hear her when she said that. But yeah, I think it wasn't even Garcelle she was mad at. She was mad that she fucked up because that doesn't align with the story she's been saying. Like, how can you say this man is like treating you terribly? Like he has you like paying your own um, legal fees in his, but he's calling you every day and then you get the messages too. So you're contacting him. He's got a way to contact you, exactly. And she said, oh, we haven't talked, we haven't talked. Uh, Erica needs to get her story straight and get everybody on board. And I understand that there are a whole lot of legal implications where it's like, she can't say she got the heads up. She can't legally say that. 
she may have, but it's like, that could cost me $11 million of his mistake. Right. Um, but we've seen this um, this Erica before when she went off on Aileen. Like, uh, Don't talk about my son. Don't right. ever talk about my son. And it's like, no, honestly, I think that's when she was finding out she was broke as a he hang. Imagine marrying a coot to get the money and then this is your life. And then she went off on um, Teddy when she's like, don't you ever call me a liar. Don't you ever. I was like, this is the real Erica Jane. It's just, I don't believe that she didn't know. And the people like they have a lot of time on their hands. Thank you so much. There's a whole Reddit list that um, one of the Bravo fans posted on her Instagram of every contradiction she said on the show so far. Every contradiction with facts going back from other seasons to watch what happens live. She said she'd never been in a bank before. And I'm like, girl, you lying. You only been with him for 22 years and you're 50. So that means like, so you've never been in a bank before, before you met Tom. So you say, I never had a debit card. Bitch, please. <laughs> um, Never had a debit card, then how do you buy things? She needs to get her story straight. Like, you watch, I can't wait till you watch it because I didn't like that, how she went off on Garcelle. Garcelle did not deserve that. Garcelle was actually upset when um, Erica left the room. She was sobbing in her bathroom. Not Garcelle, Erica. Uh, I tried to be open and honest, but mm. um, allegedly she got into it with the producer and it was on tape, but they didn't decide to put it in. She got mad at producers because they think that she egged on, like the producers egged on Garcelle to ask her about Tom calling her. Produ now, production will do that. And then there's also a camaraderie with the ladies where it's like, okay, look, we can we know that production is going to play us against each other, but come on now. Right. You can always say, I'm not going to do that. Right. Or if you want to put it in, you go and put it in. I'm not being involved. She needs to, like, I don't know. I can't wait. Like, this season has been delivering. I can't wait to catch up. The lies, the lies. Oh, rumor has it that the reason why BravoCon tickets haven't been on sale because of the Delta variant. So it might not even happen. I'm so annoyed. We were so close, so close y'all. Damn. And speaking of, New York has now been the first state to implement where like, if you're not vaccinated, you can't go into restaurants uh, you can't go into certain bars, social social situations. Um, it's starting, I want to say, next week. So if you choose to be unvaccinated, then you're going to have to stay home. And exactly, your choice, your home. They started doing that here this week. It's It's crazy to me, like how people just... You've got to walk in with your ID and your Vax card everywhere everywhere and I, I don't mind that I really don't and it's for the safety of the people that are working and for the immunocompromised who also have to run errands if majority of people don't get vaccinated then you know that COVID is just going to keep mutating until it's immune to the vaccine now I have a question for you now we talked about this a little earlier on the allegedly show but we didn't get your opinion and it's very valuable Peppa is facing a $700,000 lien for plastic surgery. How do you have a $700,000 lien in maybe a $1,300 body? Yeah, because that work she had, I saw when she turned to the side. Like, I was like, no, no. Exactly. That was a cut rate ass. That was $500 at best. It looks like a Kenya Moore special. It looked like one of those Boyd balls, you know, like when we had as a kid. This is why I needed your opinion. Uh, uh, like, you took it back to Boyd. Peppa is my girl, though. I love her, but oh my goodness, that was some bad work. And then injections and BBL procedures, like a surgeon will tell you, it's a very dangerous procedure. Like, I mean, we like to make jokes about the ass, but there's certain veins and shit like that where if anything goes wrong, like you can be poisoned easily. 
Exactly. Septus. Exactly. Like, I mean, K. Michelle, like getting, I'm sure she was at the, what, the Intercontinental? Mm hmm. And she Buckhead. It really should be the Intercontinental Hotel and Plastic Surgery Center because that's where it all goes down. The Intercontinental, when I lived in Atlanta, it, it's a nice hotel, by the way. <laughs> Me and my friend had a fabulous bougie brunch there when they first like opened, you know, whatever. But now it's the place to get, you know, work done, I guess. I don't know. Cheap injections and cheap implants. And Kate Michelle, I mean, I love her, but she's unrecognizable with that face. Love yourselves, y'all. Love who you is, flaws and all. Uh, you've seen my weight go up. You've seen my weight go down. Also, people said, oh my goodness, you look like you lost weight. There is no fast food here. There is no pizza here. What I have been eating for the past 14 years of my life is not available to me. So a bitch is just hungry all the time. And then also in New York, we're eaters. Here, people do not go out to eat. They will take you to a park. They will take you on a hike. They will take you to the beach, but they will not like, you want to go to a restaurant? You eat? Right. Uh, they always say, I ate at home. No, it's you didn't eat at home. You didn't eat. Nobody eats out here. Nobody eats. Like, there are no big people out here because nobody so, eats. Someone in the comments did say that um, there's a Popeye's somewhere. It was in the comments of our last video. It is so far for me to get to a Popeye's, for me to get to a Taco Bell. Like they really make it difficult. Oh. They make you earn it. Y'all still got the, um, like the cheesecake factories and stuff like that. Like I love Cheesecake Factory, the one in uh, Macy's. There is one Cheesecake Factory. One. Look, those fried macaroni and cheese balls, the buffalo blast, the Louisiana chicken jambalaya. Mm. I can't uh, even get good chicken wings out here. If you don't make it yourself, you don't eat. Yeah. I know exactly where we're going to go. My friend who lived there, like, she took me to this, um, this Asian restaurant, Chinese, and they had the best wings in San Francisco. Like a saucy wing. I, I'm not sure if you like a saucy wing or a dry wing. I like a dry wing, but I can appreciate a saucy wing. Yeah, I got to find out the uh, the name of the place, but definitely want to go there. Uh, my friend Brian's coming with me too. Great, I love Brian. It's also things are like still not quite open again. Like everything is has abbreviated hours. So it's like, if you don't go between 12 and five, you've missed it. Like restaurants here, like it's like 9.30, it's 9.30 is last call. And even then it's like, ooh, there's really nothing open. Like you've got to have like in LA supper. Well, I love New York and I, I plan to stay there. So there <laughs> no matter what, I'm not going back to those winters. I, I believe you, I believe you. Y'all, fans of Aaliyah, uh, finally, it is official from Black Round Records that Aaliyah will be coming to Spotify, her entire discography. Starting August 20th, we're going to get one in a million on streaming. And then not only is Black Round releasing Aaliyah's work, they're releasing JoJo's work too. I love JoJo's debut album, but the problem is all of those artists aren't going to see money from that. It's just going to be black run. You're going to be taking money from it. Oh. Right. So, you know, um, Timbaland and Magoo, like they were under black run. So their music is going to be released. And I'm excited about it because I love that song, Love to Love You. Mm -hmm. Up Jumps the Boogie. That's finally on streaming now. Wow. But that is... you're not going to see much of it because Barry Hankerson is the devil. And he deserves to actually burn in hell for holding these artists' work, and especially what he did to JoJo. JoJo was caught in a contract for at least five years. Couldn't do anything until she was released out of her contract. So now they're releasing her original work, which we love, but she doesn't see money from that. I'm glad I wasn't in the music industry because it sounds like slavery. 
Pretty much. Those those contracts were basically slavery. I mean, we've seen it with TLC. We've seen it with Tony Braxton. Pick a girl group. Anybody from Bad Boy. <laughs> oh, God. Anybody from Bad Boy. Cherie Dennis. Do y'all remember Cherie Dennis? Ooh, I love you. Hey, hey, so don't break my heart. <laughs> that poor girl. <laughs> I mean, they like drove amazing artists out of the business because they were like, look, I just can't make any money doing this, so fuck it. Right. And speaking of different artists, the encore. <laughs> have you caught up on that yet? I have not caught up on the encore because I've been fighting with my own label. Oh, right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I had somebody I had somebody try to take my catalog. <laughs> Right, your content. Why are, we, why are we playing with people's livelihoods? Oh, can we can we discuss this at least? We, we haven't even addressed it on here yet. So earlier this week, Alexander Rogers Page was just gone, snatched, snatched in the middle of the night. I mean, that, that page ran off like I was Kenya Moore or Halle Berry and the page was a husband. Cause you know, Halle Berry's husband will get up and do this. They just get the fuck on. That's that's what they tried to do to my page. I mean, I was enjoying the end of my vacation, getting ready to do my Potomac review. I'm walking out. I'm walking out of a bar, having my cigarette. I'm just like, oh, you know, you've done something with your life. You've worked really hard. You're enjoying your moment. And then I get a call from one of our delightful audience members and they say, I can't find your page. And I'm like, okay, let me call you back. And then I see the email and you never want an email from YouTube. And it just said, your page has been shut down for repeated community violations. You are putting up spam or deceptive content. And I was just like, I'm going home. And so I called a car and I went home and I just passed out. And then I will say the worst feeling in the world when I woke up that next morning, that was the worst feeling in the world. Like I, I've been through some shitty stuff. That was, I would say that was akin to Pete's death. That's how bad I felt. It was like your livelihood has been ripped from you. Your memories have been ripped from you. Like. This channel has been my address since 2012. We're going on a decade of me living here and putting out content and all of that. And just, I know I was like, I was like, you may have to build it back from scratch, but the fans came through. The audience right. came through. Tasha K came through. My friend at Google came through. Bondi Blue came through. For its rocks came through. Everybody, like, you really said, oh no, you don't get to erase you. Because that's, that would, I would say that's kind of how I felt. I felt erased. I mean, like, you've got, you can't back up all of your videos. Like, things get corrupted. You, um, because I have a lot of videos backed up, but then I had, um, I plug in the drive and then the drive gets corrupted. And I was just like, oh God, so now we've got to deal with that. And still, even if I re-uploaded everything somewhere different, the way the YouTube algorithm works, it's not going to have the same views. It's not going to have the same suggestions. So yeah, you can do a backup page, but it's never going to be the same. So fortunately, y'all got me in contact with the people I needed to be in contact with. And he got my page up. And I'm taking him to dinner. I'm not going to say who he is publicly, but who a special yeah. thank you to you. I can only imagine how that felt. And it puts in perspective how, you know, they tried to erase you. And it puts in perspective how easy it is for them to erase any of us, you know? And you really got to have, like, your hands in so many different pots now of multiple streams of income because just to see how easy they did that with no type of like basis, you know, it was like an oversight. How do you oversight deleting someone's livelihood like that just so easily and at, in the dead of the night? 12.55 a.m. West Coast time. Right, so almost 4 a.m. time. It's like, 
And it's one thing if you take a couple videos down. I we can we can deal with that. I'm glad that you know people mobilize. Um, a lot of people retweeted me, just saying like, hit up YouTube support, like tweet them. Like the fans love you. Like they love you. They love us, but they love you. <laughs> um, also, it really like touched me that the black content creators we have each other's back. Because, it was Avengers Assemble. Wow, that's a really good um, analogy because the Thanos snap, <laughs> they came right back and, and snapped you right back in. I don't watch 911. I need to watch that show because I remember you used to review it. It is so cute. It is a great feel good show. But yeah, um, you heard that Angela Bassett is going to be earning the highest salary ever for an actress of color on a broadcast drama series for her role on 911. Oh, how much is she getting? She's going to be getting $450,000. An episode. I think an episode. And they have a lot of episodes. Oh, that is wonderful. A smooth 2.5 million, and she's an executive producer of the show, and she directs episodes. So she's also getting extra on top of her actress salary because for directing an episode, that's at least 50 grand. I will say, you know, Ryan Murphy be on his bullshit sometimes with um with the stories and everything, but when he likes you, he will make sure you are taken care of. Mm-hmm. Like, he took care of his actors. Yes. He has a true acting troupe. I will say, t Ryan Murphy, he will, like, the first three seasons, he'll really focus on making a great story, and then it's like, okay, I've got to make another one, and then he lets somebody else run it, and it, it just changes. Tyler right. Perry just tries to do it all himself and puts no effort into anything. Right. <laughs> That's two very different um, <laughs> angles of the spectrum. But Tyler don't take care of his actors like Rai Rai takes care of his. And it's sad. It really is sad. Food for thought. Because would Ryan Murphy ever let one of his actresses wear a Tyler Perry wig? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Unless having a fucked up wig was a part of the story. And Tyler Perry's a billionaire, right? Tyler has more money than Ryan Murphy, but Ryan Murphy has better productions than Tyler Perry. Food for thought. But here's the thing, Ryan Murphy is about his team. Tyler Perry is about himself. The general rule of thumb is you can't be a billionaire unless you've exploited somebody, which is a great segue for our next story because Rihanna, was announced that she's a billionaire now. She's worth 1.7 billion. And 1.5 of that doesn't, isn't even involved with music. One point, like we are never gonna get an album from her again. Like this is what happens. Like people need to understand there is no guaranteed money in music. Once you get in, like you need to have your hands in different pots. And you see Beyonce, like even though she makes so much money performing, imagine how much she's getting from Ivy Park. Oh, yeah. She's making more from Ivy Park doing less. Beyonce is one of the best showgirls of our time. But imagine how much work that is. The rehearsals, the touring, it's grueling. Like, I want to go to Vegas because I don't want to tour. Like, touring is also very expensive. She's got to, you've got to pay a lot because that's a big show she's putting on. Now she can just sit and collect her Ivy Park. Rihanna can sit and collect her Fenty. And you know, the second Rihanna stopped braying like a goat, she started making money. So the difference is I will say that Beyonce actually loves to perform. Like she loves doing it. It's built into her, like her work ethic. Rihanna. Not so much. I don't think she likes the tour life, the touring and getting on stage. Beyonce, she's alive when she's on stage. And you can tell, like, like the same with Michael Jackson, like he's alive when he's on stage. So I, I put her in those categories. Hold on, don't say that too loud or they'll bring his ass to a hologram residency in Vegas too. <laughs>
child. Anyway, <laughs> congratulations to Rihanna, but I, I have a problem with billionaires, you know, and all that. I just think no one should have that much money. But that's a that's a, a talk for another another day. <laughs> I would say like if I created a TV show and it just accidentally made that much money, I'm like, no, I've earned this. And but you know, you know I would give it away. I would make sure my kids were fine. I would make sure everybody that I knew was fine. I would make sure that you were fine. And then I'd be like, okay, well, who can we help? What can we do now? Because most of the time you see rich people hoarding their money, you know, while people are like suffering and like inflation is going up and, you know, that's all. <laughs> I guess I will see you sooner than they shut my page down again. That will never happen again. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. I'll see you sooner than Erica Jane's next lie. <laughs> and that's very soon. So. That's very soon. We'll see you next week. 8 p.m., 9 central.